h5p.org has this great page where they list all the chronotypes that are available or officially available for h5p and if we scroll down we'll see one new edition now where is it where is it where is it oh here it is qr code it, it um yeah you notice that it, it's written kind of strange uh, kind of yeah it is strange uh, because qr code of course would normally be written with a q and an r like here um but actually there's a company in in japan which is called tenso and they have um a trademark on uh, the term QR code, so you can use QR code in general in a general way. So, like, create QR codes, which is fine. But I wasn't sure if I would name this content type QR code if I was would be violating, um, uh, yeah, some trademark rules. And didn't want that, so now it's called QR code spelled in a different way. So what can I do with it? So um, I guess most of you only know QR codes or maybe use QR codes for um, using URLs. Uh, so for linking to URLs. But actually QR codes can do much more. Uh, maybe it, it maybe I can give you some time here. So you can, t maybe you have a smartphone at hand and uh, you could just um, open, maybe I'll, I'll do it at the same time. You don't, uh, maybe you can, uh, you can see that then. Um, I'll open my, smartphone app for QR codes. Where is it? Um, where is it? I could have prepared that because I could have hooked up my smartphone to the, the screen. I guess a normal camera can do it as well. So I have my smartphone here and now my camera is pointing at the QR code and it's a, it's now says contact info and it gives me a phone number for, for example. I don't know if your phone is the same. Um, but QR codes cannot only be used to link to URLs, of course you could do that as well, but um, this is obviously is um, meant for contact information. If I click on it, you can actually see which, uh, what is um, yeah, behind this. That's the information that is stored inside the QR code. And if you have your smartphone and you um, took a, a picture of the QR code, uh, usually your smartphone phone will notice, okay, this is contact information and will ask you, um, should I put that into the your personal address book, for example. So you could do that as well. Uh, by the way, I don't know who Mark Nicholson is. Um, I have no clue. Uh, Yelena, who created the, the demo content, for some reason uh, listed him. Maybe he's a good diving instructor, I don't know. Um, yeah, so you could have um, 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 contact information, I don't know, what was the second example, oh, location example, so of course you could have uh, contact information, you could have URLs, I said that before, and you can also have locations, so this is just latitude and longitude, and if you um, open that QR code with your smartphone, usually uh, Google Maps or, is it Apple Maps, I don't know, or would open and would show you the right location, and I guess this was something in, uh, in Tromsø, um, I'm not completely sure. Might be where Paul lives. I, I'm, I, I don't know. Don't know exactly, but the location was close. Oh no, no, it was the um, uh, the church. Yeah, but 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 Paul lives close by. Um, you can do that. So and uh, because that is a little abstract, maybe just seeing QR codes. Maybe you would like to see it in action. And of course, we can do that. And you can do that on hrf.org as well. But you have to log in here, and I I just use. The opportunity to show you another cool site about HRF. It's in German, don't be afraid. Um, it is called einstieghafenp.de. That would be the URL in German. Like, uh, what would it be in English? Einstieghafenp.de, um, which is a site that Neil Hirsch created. Um, she often um, uh, introduces people to H5P, and it's kind of clumsy if you want to show. Uh, people HFP that uh, to, to people who don't have an account somewhere it doesn't really work so she created this website where you don't have to log in and yeah it's all in German but as I said don't be afraid it, it's nothing uh, complicated and you don't have to log in but you can just click on this button which means create test content and then um, it, it's quite familiar so um, you can create HFP content here and you could search for QR code because it's installed here and you could create it. So again, it's all in German, but I guess title is yeah, self-explanatory. It's always there. So we could say QR code. And now we can choose what type of information should be 
inside this QR code. So as you can see, URL is a default because most people use that. But um, what we could have, we could have contact information. So as I, um, I told you, um, if you take a picture of that QR code, it will usually open the, the address book and ask you, should I add that contact? Or if it's in there, maybe um, should I call the contact, for example? This is um, like an event, you can have the same, um, yeah, you can have event information and um, yeah, on a smartphone, your your calendar app probably would open and ask you, should I add that to your, your calendar? You can have email addresses and it, you, I guess you, you can um, imagine what happens. Your email client would open to write an email address. Uh, I'll skip the next one. So this would be a location. Standort in German, it could be phone number, it could be a short message service number. Short message? Oh, that is different for Germans. Short message service number. It could just be text, could be URL, or um, this is a special case, it could be any H5P content type, which is, um, uh, yeah, what, which you can create with H5P. I'll do that because well, maybe I'll, I'll show you maybe uh, which is quick. Let's say, like, use a contact. So, um, you can add, add whatever you like. It, at least you'll have to add a name. So I don't know. It could be John Doe, and it could be an organization. As you can see, it would H five P fan club. Position uh, position would be the. Um, I think it's used for uh, for work related positions where you work. Could be have a phone number. Could have an email address. It could be like there's a physical postal address that you could add. Um, yeah, let's just create some fake John Doe email address maybe and um, yeah maybe he doesn't have an address he's dead uh, John Doe is always dead uh, maybe maybe he has a website John Doe.com I guess maybe that <laughs> that might actually exist I don't know um, yeah and if you save that it would we create the, the just the QR code and um, as you noticed um, this is it the, the funny thing is um, it doesn't make sense to have it on a smartphone, for example, because you on a smartphone you would can take a picture on your of your smartphone to see the QR code. So that is why you can click on it and also get the information. So as you can see, um, that would be the information inside it. So it, it's John with his name and his email address and his URL. Nothing spectacular. Now the m maybe more interesting um, way of doing it, at least oh oh. Uh, this contact has a history actually that's why i'm on this page as well um because i did that uh, i created this content type because Nela, she who created this site asked me um couldn't you create a qr content um qr content type yeah that's correct and um i did that and then um i thought okay url would be enough because of course you could uh link to any h5p content if you have the url and um yeah, if you click on H5P here, then now we can um, kind of, it's not really including the um, H5P content in the QR code, of course, but it will automatically, dynamically create, automatically, dynamically, it doesn't make sense. It will automatically create uh, the URL where this um, content would be uh, located. So let's quickly create some text um, content maybe and save it. And now you, could, you see um, this is the QR code which is created. And um, if you would use it with your smartphone, or if I, of course, just click this link, so I click on that one, and you will be taken to the text content, which, of course, is yeah, not that, that fancy, but um, that's how it works. And I just noticed um, that James has a question. I wonder whether this content type uh, QR code will be added into other content types, such as course presentation or IB. Uh, interactive book that is. It really would really it would really useful be useful to be able to have the uh, oh my god I can't read it would really useful to be able to have in these fully featured content types. Um, I don't know I guess uh, because the reason why I created that is because I um, when I create presentations I don't do that often but um, whenever I do I I like to put a QR code. Uh, on the first slide, linking to the presentation, so that people who um, um, are watching me or watching my presentation can uh, skip forward if they <laughs> think it's boring, so they, they have it right now. And um, 
it was clumsy for me because H5V didn't have this QR code kind of type and so um, I would have to create the URL somewhere and um, find a QR code generator, add that URL, save the image, upload the image to course presentation and that was, yeah, I, too, that were too many steps for me. So that is the reason why I created it. And um, I, there's, it's, it's really not, not difficult to add that. Um, the one thing that uh, it, it's, I couldn't show that maybe sometime, it's adding one line of code to course presentation. And the thing is, I mean, it's one line for adding it and then you have to have an icon, which is, I don't know, five more lines of code. Um, the thing is, if you have, take a look at the, uh, maybe we can do that here. Um, if we take a look at course presentation, for example, you will notice that the the toolbar is kind of cramped already. So there's this three dot icon, if, and if you click that, there are some more icons, and there is just space for maybe two, for maybe three more, and then um, yeah, th this uh, this menu will spill over the rest of it, it, the the uh, graphical user interface is not designed to uh, include more content types, but um, I think you, you were there last time. Um, this will be changed anyway because um, here in some way the content hub will be integrated. And um, I don't know, here's will, will just be maybe one button. So add more content and it will open the um, the hub in some way and where you can choose the content. So um, yeah, long answer short, maybe. Um, I don't know if it will be included, but it's really um, not difficult. And I don't think the HRF core team has anything against it. Um, they, they, they're just swamped right now. So, um, yeah, my suggestion would be, uh, um, yeah, just ask on the forum or if you can code a little, and if you want to work on HRFP, just make yourself familiar. It's really just changing five lines of code, roughly could be six or seven, but it's not uh, complicated. And you could create a pull request on GitHub and, and add that as well. And um, when they find some time and say, okay, that's fine. They'll just merge it in.